how will the lady be able to come back here? Later, one must return, if only for a little while. They had only lived together for a year. Why is his image so vivid in the mind? The wind picked up, and Richard came down from the sky. Mr. said he would find the protagonist wherever she was. Why did my lady remember those words of his now? Where would she run to? No, there was nowhere to run. How could she escape from the one who commanded the wind? Did Mademoiselle think she could run away and not be found? Where was the girl going with their child? Duchy of Roblin, seven years ago. Elise was told that the Duke had summoned her. She was aware of it. The lady had been reborn as the heroine of a novel. She had come to terms with that. But why was the protagonist reborn specifically as the heroine of a 19-plus novel? The lady's real name is So Yuna. In her previous life, she was 20 years old and loved to read fantasy novels. Her life was abruptly cut short by a car accident. This is the end, but then Miss suddenly opened her eyes, and she was already in someone else's body. She was confused and frightened, but she soon realized what had happened to her. A girl reborn as the heroine of the novel Golden Cage, category 19+, and she is the future mother of the novel's villain. In the book, Elise grew up in an Earl's family, but she was in fact an orphan, and her lack of love made her very dependent on others and made her relationship with Richard toxic. At the end, he kills her. Having failed to recognize parental love as a child, she is unhappy in adulthood as well and dies at the hands of her own husband. He doesn't want to end his life that way. The maid told my lady that she would come in with her. In the story, Elise will live for another 10 years. In that time, she simply must change her fate. Albert Rublin, the most powerful man in the empire, the head of the Rublin family, nicknamed the Storm. Only a year ago, he lost his wife and son and was drowning in grief. The gentleman lit a cigarette and said that it was time for the protagonist to get married. Let her be thankful that a commoner like her had the honor of being part of their great family. Of course you are. Why would the only ducal family in the empire would marry their son to a girl from an impoverished family living in the slums? Besides, she's an orphan. Count Lowen Green, Elisa's father, died three years ago. His wife, in an incident on the road, only mistress miraculously survived. But the girl did not inherit a fortune because her father's enterprise went bankrupt. She had no other relatives. And the Duke chooses among dozens of young noblewomen. She's the one. As if he needed a lady for something. Mr. said women have it easy. All she has to do is give a man an heir, and then she can enjoy a luxurious life at his expense. She just got her period, and he's already talking about labor. What a disgusting thing to say. It's really men who have it easy. Go there, do this, do that, and go home. The man gets all the rewards for his wife's labors in starting a family, at which point a man entered and addressed his lordship and said that the young duke was delayed because of trouble with brigands. There are no bandits on its roads. So says the young duke. He will arrive through a mountain pass. Why go to all this trouble? He thought it would be safer. A bad head can't rest on its feet. The only time to wait for him, Mr. thinks, is at midnight. Oh, he's decided to show him how he feels about this engagement. The man asked me to sign on a piece of paper. It was a prenup. Ten years would pass before this marriage ended in murder. What if she didn't bear him a child and did everything she could not to fall in love with him? Well, my lady will enjoy the luxurious life of a duchess. Maybe she can get a share of his fortune in a divorce. There's nothing to think about. So, Richard Rublin and Elisa Leon Green are now husband and wife, and their marriage has been blessed by the goddess Arena. May they be blessed on their journey together. In eight years, something's bound to happen here. The protagonist was put into incredibly luxurious quarters and lived there for ten days. I wonder if the Duchess's bedroom will be as luxurious when Miss marries. The yard's quiet, so I guess he hasn't arrived yet. Fine, he doesn't have to come. Actually, she has mixed feelings. She's intrigued, but also afraid of him. Richard would die a few years before the affair began. She knew little about him, but the scene she remembered was far from flattering to his character. Let him not come tonight. The window's open. Who's there? Who is that young man? Uh, the lady didn't want him to approach. Tisk, mister said it was too small. At this point, he jerked the door open. Damn. Is the door locked? Those assholes. Uh, this boy, I guess. I mean, that boy is Richard. The wind but the window's closed. I guess that's the magic of the ruble, the magic of the rublins. It is sometimes inherited in their family. They possess the magic of the wind. In the story, Richard and his son Haynes had that power. Is he going to break down the door? 
The master was very angry and said he was going to kill everyone. Oh, he's coming. Miss covered herself with the blanket with her head after that. Then she looked out and saw him lying on the couch. He is, after all, her husband now. Maybe Miss should say something to him. My lady said hello to the young duke. She is Elisa Lowen Green, and, from now on, she's called Elisa Rublin. Nice to meet you. The main character just ignored her. Miss didn't know what his character was yet, but she knew one thing for sure. He's first and foremost a cad. The guy said to cancel. Cancel what? The wedding. Have the man call it off immediately. Marriage vows made before the goddess cannot be broken. His lordship never made them. So he wanted to break his vows? What's wrong with her? She's just a child, but she has a pretty face. Or does he want to be like a duke and only marry the one he loves? They'll live together until they're adults. And they should already be thinking about heirs. When she gives birth to him, he can marry whoever he wants. The young man was angry, for that was not the point at all. This was his only heir. It was his duty to accept his Dina and conceive an heir with her. He has everything in this life. And that's just because he was his grandson. If Mr. persists, he'll just have everything. Has anyone asked him if he wants to be the heir? He has no feelings for that girl. Mr. asked to keep her out of his room. But that's when they ran into each other at the exit. The guy just walked past. The protagonist asked His Excellency if he had summoned her. The man asked Richard to wait. It was reported to him that the two had not been to the first breakfast after their marriage. Yes, the servant said there was a tradition, a solemn circle breakfast after the first night. Milady woke up alone in her room. The Duke wasn't in the refectory either, so what's he talking about anyway? Well, they're just now getting a proper look at each other. It's no big deal. They'll get along. The master thought that they had already gotten to know each other. Young people should get to know each other gradually. No one's rushing them. For the time being, the protagonist replied to his father that he had said his word. She will not live in his room. A husband and wife usually sleep in the same bed. Does the young man have a problem with that? That shill of his. The duke said that Elisa was on time, and he had something for her. Tomorrow her teacher is coming to see her, and they're going to study from this book. Let the missus study diligently, and one day she will be the head of the family. The missus obeyed his lordship. It looked like she would have to learn stuffy and old-fashioned traditions. Oh, memorizing house rules? That's the last thing I need. Miss didn't want to go in there. Maybe he wouldn't be at the door. Feet. The guy was in the room. It didn't sound like a normal conversation between grandfather and grandson. Everyone knows that the Storm of Ruble sees Richard solely as a successor to the family, as a flaming stallion, and he's always been furious about it. If so, the enemy of her enemy is her friend. Madame turned to the young duke and said he must have misheard her yesterday. She will reintroduce herself. Her name is... The young man asked her to just back off. Honor? Their black dragon he was clearly out of sorts. Okay, good night to him. He's so stubborn so hard, something just to respond to a greeting. The next day, mistress's training began. The tutor came in the mornings. Milady learned embroidery, graceful manners, and etiquette. Everything that a duchess needs to know. I had to be diligent, because I was bored beyond belief. But after school, Miss was free for the rest of the day, and she prefers to spend her time reading her favorite books. Not surprisingly, the Duke's library is huge, with a vast selection. Milady is completely unfamiliar with this world, so for her, it is a treasure trove. Mistress began to spend most of her time reading. She's happy with many things in her life. Except for one thing, Richard's attitude. They need to work together on a divorce plan, but he is uncooperative. He tells the lady to go to bed. The lady tells them to go to bed together. Mister could be safe. No one is going to eat him. What? Mademoiselle gave him her hand and told him to take it and they'd go to bed in peace. What? Is she serious? And in the library, the miss saw him, thought he was asleep and brought a blanket. But the gentleman didn't appreciate it and grabbed her arm. What a savage. Well, let's see who's who. What, did the duke make her do it? Huh? Miss was trying to seduce him or what? Seduce? Richard didn't get it. She wasn't acting on his lordship's orders. Ha! Huh. Why should I believe her? Milady thought he was just at a nervous age, but he calls his grandfather a duke. Their relationship is going nowhere. The young man must be aware that his wife is an orphan. She has lost both parents, and the duke is the only one who has taken custody of her. It's known, but just so a girl knows, the easiest way to tell lies about family is when someone is trying to lead others astray.
Maybe he doesn't believe anyone at all because he's been raised with lies. The lady's only 12 years old. How can he not realize that she had a choice between life on the streets and marriage? Mistress chose to marry and live in luxury. Is that how the Duke taught you to seduce Mistress? And if so, what difference does it make? In what way? If a lady seduces him, does anyone force him to give in to her? The girl remembered that in the story. Clan Alentia created four families. Storm Rublins, Wind Mages, Flame Caro, Fire Mages, Esther Singers, Mages of the Earth, and the life-giving Sirios, the Waterbenders. They were at the beginning of the Empire. One day they gathered to hold a council, who would be Emperor. Both the Kairos and the Rublins had ambitions to become Imperial families. There was a long debate, and finally the families agreed that the Cairo would sit on the throne with an eternal oath. This was that the Cairo family should never forget the needs of the people, and the Rublins will always be a counterbalance to the August family and will maintain the balance of power. But over time, the power of the oath began to fade. The Cairo imperial family plotted to usurp the power of the Roblin family, and they did it by merging the families. They planned to usurp power by marrying the crown princess and the young duke. To prevent this, the duke found the protagonist among the noble families and offered to marry his grandson. Sure, Mr. could marry the crown princess, but then he would have no friend in his life, no one to be on his side. The young man thought she was an empty-headed fool, but it turns out she was not. The girl said that she didn't need a title or an heir from her husband. Please let him be patient and not divorce her until mistress is an adult, and then Elise will just leave and they will never meet again. The protagonist accepts her offer, but she in turn is obliged to leave at the appointed time. Something warm against my back. The blanket feels so nice. Stop. Hey, what the hell is that? Why was Miss hugging him? She asked him to hold her hand, and now he's clinging to her like a tick? Just don't let the lady say she rolled in unintentionally. Eh. My lady changed her face and said through her sleep that she was cold. The master took the blanket and stole it. What a clingy bastard. Ugh, mademoiselle said Mr. Rude. He walked out without even saying hello. Okay, today is room her room. She will be reading history books all day. Huh? Why is the maid cleaning alone? She's still small and might fall. Her name is Anna, and she's not tall enough for this job. A couple days ago, she was cleaning and scrubbing the bedroom floor, and she doesn't even have anyone to help her. Also, the other maids are loading her up with work. They take advantage of her being small. How can you hurt the little ones? They can't get away with it. The main character approached Anna and asked why she was cleaning there. And, what? The Duchess asked again. Why was the girl cleaning there? It's her duty to clean the bedroom. Oh, dot, dot, dot. It was just that the young maid wanted to clean this room today. The lady was seen changing the linens and dusting. Yes, she did. Why? Because it's Lena's job to change the laundry. And Julia's supposed to do the dusting. Oh, well, because, uh... A couple of days ago, they asked them both to fill in for a day. But the girl didn't do well. And for that, they were scolded by Mr. Marquis. The child felt guilty and thought she just had to help them. But what if they were to be scolded for their maid work tomorrow, too? Oh, those bastards. They make her work for three and when they are scolded for a job poorly done, they tell the child to do the same again, although maybe they lied about the Marquis scolding them, and not for the first time. Madam allows her not to work for them. Did the servants have breakfast this morning? N no That's it. Then let him sit down and try this dish. May I? Of course. The girl has decided that she would go and take care of those two negligent maids. The Marquis allowed Elise to enter. What's wrong? Nothing much. She came to ask a favor. Have her maids replaced. What's the reason for the lady's request? The protagonist needs maids who would clean the chambers well, serve meals on time, and change the sheets. Could he find one? The mistress has only one maid, and her duty is to clean the bedroom. The maids are supposed to share the chores, but, for some reason, only one of the three of them works. She's overworked and can't keep up with anything. His lordship has ordered Aaron to deal with it immediately. Yes, of course. The little countess must not be made to feel uncomfortable in this house. They'll sort it out. Miss can go. The duke won't hurt the girl. He needs her to be satisfied. Though he can kick her out at any time, it would take a special occasion to do so. He wants to give the appearance of caring for my lady, and he needs to take advantage of that. That day, as it turned out, the maids decided to take a walk in the town square, and for their absenteeism, they were fired. The man said that he would not keep any of them on the job. The maids had a lot of absenteeism and were not working hard enough. 
and the Duke was furious that they had shown his house such monstrous disrespect. They clearly didn't want to work, so they were free. Dismissal without a letter of recommendation means a maid can no longer work in any aristocratic house. It's their own fault. They shouldn't have been such assholes and hurt the child. The protagonist began to show initiative and ask Duke Albert for help. He does almost everything the girl asks. Still, she does not ask for much. For example, Mistress asked him to find him financial literacy teachers for her. Of course, he didn't really want my lady to be financially literate, but Mademoiselle turned to his lordship and said that the point was that she wanted to study in order to please her husband Richard. And it worked. The Rublins have a huge fortune, and the Duke doesn't limit the spending of his grandson's wife much. She needs to take advantage of this to better prepare herself for the moment when she needs to divorce. Milady will try again and again until she starts a successful venture. Lessons in financial literacy will help her in the future. By the time Mistress divorces, she should be able to provide for herself by now. What was the main character doing there? She was, in case your husband forgot, a countess. And her position required her to be financially literate. Plus, they'll be in class together. It was funny, of course. At that moment, the teacher behind him coughed, glad that his students had arrived. Milady turned to the esteemed teacher and informed him that she would be studying with him as of today as well. Pleased to meet you. The Duke was very complimentary of her thirst for knowledge. It's an honor to teach her. Well, let's get started. They had learned the basics. My lady needed to show the numbers 326, 15, and 739 on the bills. All right, then. The young man at that moment helped her. 326 is done like this, and 739 like this. The teacher did not see this, and praised the young duchess. She had done everything right. Miss thanked Richard at that moment, and smiled, which confused him. Mr. Hand, oops, don't let the lady get distracted. Uh-huh. The guy was thinking about how he wasn't helping his spouse, just learning. She's a pretty slow learner. But once Miss learns the basics, she'll be able to solve problems. Maybe she really will be useful to him in financial matters in the future. Basically, there are five tools for counting. One of them is an abacus. That's all for today. The lesson was over. The lady turned to Richard. What happened already? The girl said she was going to go to see the properties with Anna. Is he going with her? He has no time. Wow, the young man wasn't even worried about her. At that moment, Anna came in and greeted the gentleman. Oh, she's here. Well, they're on their way. Miss is bringing her husband some cookies. Cookies? Is that what children like? What? Mr. Smartass thinks that because the main character likes cookies, she's a child? Let him say he's spoiled. Mademoiselle had thought they would get along, if only because they were both hostage to this situation. Was she wrong about him? Oh, so only kids like cookies, huh? Then Madame will come and eat all the cookies right in front of him. All right, as she wishes. Mister thought about the rain that was about to fall. With the arrival of spring, the monsters in the forest became more active. They began to come out of the thicket in search of prey. Elise was more threatened by them than by the highwaymen. The monsters were rarely spotted closer to their estate, but still, oh ho, that's a shame. If the lady gets eaten by monsters, the old man will kill him and bring him another girl who might be mean and callous. If that's the case, then he likes his current wife better. I wish the road to the north gate would be fixed sooner. The road to the west gate is bumpy and long, and my lady suffers greatly. What did Anna say? She didn't walk, after all. But even in a carriage, you can get tired. When her ladyship was driving, it's all right, she needn't worry. When they reached the town, they could have tea with the cookies they had bought. In the Rublin family, it is not customary for men to eat sweets. It doesn't matter if it's a sweet from the estate's kitchen or if it's just a cookie carried by the missus. It's still not allowed. A girl was thinking about opening a candy store after her divorce. But when she asked the chef, and it turned out they didn't have the ingredients, she bought some on her own. If this was not enough, Mademoiselle would go to town again on a fine day and procure more. At this moment, the carriage shuddered. Is her ladyship hurt? No, she's fine. The monsters, the monsters attacked. What? Monsters? The girls have been ordered to lie down on the floor, and under no circumstances to leave the carriage. The knights will deal with the monsters. What? Are there really monsters here? At this moment, Anna started crying and asked if they were sure they weren't in any danger. It's all right. The knights can handle it. Let her wait a while. At that moment, the carriage shuddered once more, but much more violently now. Oh, what happened? The lady saw the monster and its growling at the window. Ugh, 
It fell and attacked the carriage. What happened to the knights and other servants? Is it all of them? No, my lady doesn't want to die like this. At that moment, there was a flash. Richard arrived in time and began destroying the foul creature with his magic. How did the monster even dare to attack the crew of the Rublins? Oh, he's asking for it. Well, that's how he got what he wanted. After that, he was destroyed. One lightning strike, and he's dead. At that moment, the protagonist looked out of the carriage and asked Richard to help them. They can't get out. Sure, okay. My lady asked if Anna was all right? Yes, she's fine. Is she brave, or is she a little out of her head? You could see how scared she was. A lady taking care of some servant girl instead of thinking of herself. Wait, the girl doesn't notice the wound on her arm? Well, it'll be healed in a couple days. She smiled at Richard and thanked him for saving them. She would repay him in kind. I wonder how a little girl who likes cookies can repay him. Hey, is he at it again? Mister was right to rush to the rescue. Oh my gods, the Duchess was so beautiful. She was like a porcelain doll. The young Duke will fall in love with her at first sight. Wow, the maids worked very hard on her look and her hair. Today was a very important day, and they had to make her look good. The main character would definitely have no competition. She was a goddess. She really was. She's the only angel they've got. By the way, the Duke asked my lady to come to the hall. All right, it's time to go. Oh, gods. She's already pretty, but now the girl was just glowing. What's the matter with the Duke? He took one look at the miss and then turned away as if he didn't know her. Is he angry about something again? Anna said the gentleman must be smitten with her splendor. Isn't it obvious? The missus told his lordship she was here. Um, Elise looked well. She must not forget. She is now the Duchess of Rublin. May she not dishonor their great family at this reception. That's right. She must remember that she has been given a great honor, and many noble ladies would like to be in her place. Milady realizes this, and has been prepared for it since she first arrived at the manor. All right. Now it's time for them to go. The night after the monster attack, a messenger brought the duke an invitation from the emperor. Their goals are very clear. Some wench has stolen a favorable husband for the crown princess. They need to find out if there's a flaw in her background and if this marriage is real, and we need to get rid of her. Even if they had declined the invitation, the emperor wouldn't have prosecuted them for it, but the honor of the Rublins simply won't allow them to refuse. So four days later, he and Richard went to the island with Duke Albert. They'll be with the royal entourage for two weeks, and if they don't resolve all the issues in that time, they'll have to go again after a while. The protagonist wouldn't want a second such forced trip. Why was her husband staring at her so intently? Just as the maid said, she was simply brilliant today. Mistress asked Richard why it was that he was looking at her like that, huh? Um, what was it that he saw there and reached out? Ah, the girl realized he was looking at the string in her hair. Thank him. You're welcome. What a shame. Time to change the subject. My lady asked me to tell her please about his majesty and the crown princess. What are they? Lumps of dung. That's what they are. Dung. How can he talk like that about the royal family? Of course, the guy's usually pretty harsh in his judgment. But this is a little too harsh for her taste. Where did he get that idea? My lady and my lord have been informed that they've arrived. Send them out. Oh, the looks on their faces. The girl wasn't feeling well anymore. Everyone started greeting his lordship and asking who was the young lady next to him. Ah, what a charmer. All the cream of the crop in one place. The cream of society? A carriage with the imperial coat of arms. Red hair. This is the August Cairo family. They greeted the raging flames of the Alentia. How happy to see them on this fine spring day. The cold winter is over. All are alive and well, thank the gods. Duke Rublin, is that the young duke's new consort? She is. Eliza Rublin introduced herself and said she was honored to meet his majesty. At this point, the woman said that she thought she was a provincial because she was the daughter of Lone Green. She is quite lovely and behaves like a proper lady. She was underestimated. The mother told Michaela to be kind and take this little girl under her wing and tell her about life on the island. Even the mother hedgehog gives the hedgehog a big hug. They're just as good as each other. The hunt will begin after lunch. Ladies and gentlemen were allowed to pass. The prince asked the young aristocrats to follow him. His highness has been told that this guy's been absent a long time. They said he's been sick. Wow, they're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. Ugh, mistress is so tired, and the hunt hasn't even started yet. What's going on out there? The boy asks Anselm where he's been missing for so long. Doesn't he know how much the prince missed him? I think he missed him too. 
so he's allowed to sit across from his highness. What is he doing? Let him sit down. On the left will be the Count of Mullier, and that's where they'll put. He seated everyone as he wished himself, and put those he liked closer to him. They did turn out to be pieces of dung, and next to Anselm will sit this hillbilly, the daughter of Lowen Green. That is, he meant to say, the future Duchess of Rublin. Let her sit in that seat. He didn't know her yet. The girl would sit somewhere else on principle and see what he would do. Better yet, she'd go over and punch him in the gourd a couple times. But that's not wise. One must behave in a manner worthy of one's title. Richard? Did he sit next to the girl instead of that pale fellow? The prince turned to the young Duke of Rublin and said he was obliged to sit at his right hand. Where is he going? Is that so? The mister replied that his wife sat where he ordered her to sit. Wasn't his place beside her? Had he now taken her side? Huh? Was the young man chained to it? He was acting like a boy. That's okay. Everybody sits wherever they want. Are they going to start the meal? Although we have to wait, the aperitif comes first. Will they have a drink? Mademoiselle did not understand why he poured himself grape juice. There he poured it on that pale boy. What? Oh, the prince apologized. He was just going to offer him a drink first, but he accidentally spilled it. How clumsy of him. Ha ha, he looks good with purple hair. If you wash your hair with grape juice, it'll always be like that. Everyone started laughing and saying that his highness was witty. How funny. What a handsome man with colored hair, isn't he? Ha 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 ha. Mistress didn't understand. Is this a madhouse? He's mocking the guy, and everyone else is cackling like a herd of hyenas. Milady started wiping Anselm's face and said she would help him, but everyone said he didn't need help and got angry. The Duchess was told that she was so kind. She cared for the prince's good friend. After that, the boy raised his glass to drink to my lady's kind heart. All agree? You could see he wanted to douse her. Where did that wind come from? Just a second later, his highness himself was in the grape juice. Rublin did this? Then the butler told his highness to go and change quickly, and the man yelled for the plebeian to take his hands off him. His sister also told him to go and change his clothes. It's not proper to be dressed like that in public. He should be quiet, but he's acting like a spoiled brat? Huh? Where did Richard go? At this moment, a pale lad turned to my lady and thanked her. What did he say? You're welcome. Mademoiselle ran after her husband and afterwards thanked him for protecting her. She's part of the family now, after all. That's his only motive. Mistress knew. But still, why did he help? Just thank him, her consort. What's wrong with him? The lady thanked him profusely. So, what, he grudgingly helped her? Uh, no use blotting. The juice spatter did get on the dress. It's so beautiful. It's a shame. Yeah, Anna said that too. It's a shame. If it wasn't for this incident, she would have been enjoying a tea party in the company of young ladies of high society by now. The lady went to drink grape juice to prepare herself mentally for the tea party. They will not grieve in vain. The girl will have plenty of opportunities to have tea with the other ladies. Yes, of course. What is that? What's that sound? Miss told Anna to be quiet and do what she says. No questions asked. Did she understand? There are men there, while the protagonist didn't know what lineage they were from. What are they doing at the royal hunt? The head said to remember that their target is young Mr. Rublin. Damn it, Richard's in danger. The lady should report this to the royal guards and ask for help. However, could it be that these suspicious people were sent by the emperor? Mistress couldn't trust them. The only ones who could protect Richard now were the knights of Duke Rublin. The maid told my lady they've gone. What are they to do? Run. They just have to find Mr. Right away. Her ladyship came running to Sir Duncan and Sir Arthur. What's happened? Miss reported that the young duke was in danger and needed help. What? They should go into the woods with the duchess and find the young duke. The lady must have been joking. This is the emperor's hunting grounds, guarded by the finest knights in the empire. What is she, really? What if the protagonist is right? And the duke is actually in danger? Did they think Duke Albert would let them live through something like this? They, of course, did not swear allegiance to the girl, and they had the right not to follow her orders. But they swore allegiance to the Rublin family, and they must keep their oath. Mistress rode her horse deep into the forest. But how will she find Richard there? In the story, he is supposed to survive and then become the Haynes's father. But friend, because of the lady's rebirth, the story won't be the same anymore? No matter what happens, Mistress has a duty to protect Richard. That vortex, it's the boy's magic. His power is immense. Something's wrong. At this point, the knights turned to my lady. 
the protagonist showed where he was. It was visible. The lady was riding and just praying that only he would be safe and sound. That damned sorcerer! Let someone stop this wind! Ah! Miss was already running toward him. Was he injured? Wait, the young man has a wound on his side. He's exhausted. And after that, he just fell to the ground. The hunt was quickly ended after this incident. An attempted murder took place on the royal hunting grounds. Duke Albert addressed the assembled nobles and insisted that the assassination attempt on his grandson should be investigated. The emperor was angered by this request. However, he was forced to agree because he did not want to bring suspicion on his family. He asked the duke to take charge of the investigation. When arrangements were made, the young duke was taken home for treatment. Fortunately, the cut was not deep. The imperial family is to blame. What does the duke think about it? He only glanced at his grandson. Anna turned to my lady during these thoughts. What was with the maid? She just had no face on her. She came to say something to her. Well? The maid was walking down the corridor and she saw a H-man. It was one of the killers they'd seen in the woods together. And the girl followed him. He went into the duke's study and the maid overheard. And now a terrible truth is revealed. It was Duke Albert who ordered the assassination. How could it be? Why the royal hunt? Did he use his grandson to show everyone the power of the House of Rublin? The Duke is visited by aristocrats all day long. The protagonist was sure that they were coming to express sympathy after what had happened. Was he really capable of doing that to his grandson? Mistress turned to Anna and hoped she understood that blabbing about this was absolutely not allowed. Did she understand? Ye yes of course. Mademoiselle said that the maid seemed tired. So she could go and rest. Yes, of course. If he finds out the truth, he'll definitely want to leave the family. And the lady will become redundant. But she has a conscience. Miss can't hide such a painful truth from him. When the young man wakes up, the girl will tell him everything. And he woke up. The spouse asked how he was feeling. Why is the protagonist awake at this hour? Did he ask more? Her husband is sick, need to take care of him. Does he want to say thank you? He doesn't need help. Let Elisa go to bed better. Then the mistress changed her face and said that there was something Richard needed to know. Let her speak. These mercenaries made an attempt on his life on orders, on orders from his grandfather. Milady saw some suspicious people in the woods, and they then attacked him. She didn't have to go on. The boy knew. How did he know? He's a bastard. He has commoner blood in him. When his father was still alive, the duke sent thugs to kill him too. He was the shame of the rubleman to him. But when his father died, this man came to him. He suddenly wanted Mr. to be his heir. Even if he's half a ruble, that's enough for the right of inheritance. That's how the young man got there. One day, the protagonist will tear this hated house to pieces. Ah, Madame thought he was just having a hard time. Turns out he's like this because he's been living like hell all the time. In the story, Elise didn't help him in any way and accepted his situation as the norm. And misunderstands why it was so hard for him. The main character put her hand on his. What happened? The lady said. That she has always been with her spouse. She'll always be at his side, no matter what happens. Let him take care of her, okay? The man has come by order of his majesty. Let the Marquis Felicius be seated. He is honored to see him this morning. The king thought he was watching everything with his own eyes. Of course he did. The thundering rublin. That little monster suited his title. The crown prince has expressed concern for the fate of the empire. He's supposed to be concerned about security. Raymond, what would he do in his place with a pawn who might become a queen in the future? I'd get rid of it, of course. But what if there was no legal basis for it? The Marquis knew that a ruler can't kill whoever he wants. If there's no reason, it must be fabricated. Fabricate? His Majesty could use the brotherly oath. A fraternal oath was taken by the four founding families of the empire. If three families rebel against the emperor for justifiable reasons, the emperor has no right to execute them. And if the emperor asks for their help, they must protect his interests above their own. They can't kill the rubleheads physically, but they can, so to speak, exsanguinate them. That's the advantage of the Brotherhood Oath. Have the protagonist subtract 192 from 569. Hmm? 367? Let her move one more pebble, and that's right. It turned out to be 377. The girl thought, at least this time she'll guess. What a shame but she already has a much better relaxation, so let her relax. My lady has been informed that the Earl of Arden has come to pay her a visit. Who is he? And on what business? He came to show his gratitude 
saying he owed her ladyship a great debt of gratitude. Arden? Anselm Arden. Grape juice. Misremembered? Ah, so this is the son of the Earl of Arden. Does my lady favor a change of image? Yeah. Hey, the Duke's coming too. Where? He's injured, actually. Let her husband rest. Miss will greet the Count on his behalf. Did you get dressed up before meeting him? You said you were going to take care of the main character. You could have sent a letter or a gift, if you're so grateful. What nerve? Sneaking into Richard's house under the pretense of some sort of gratitude. And why is Elise so dressed up? The guy said he wanted to return the lady's handkerchief, unfortunately, but his servants couldn't get the stain out. So he gave her a new one. Not worth it, for the girl had had enough of them. Thank her, for my lady being so good to him. No need to thank her. She just did what she had to do. You can't just sit back and watch a person get bullied. It's time to change the subject. The lady thanked the gentleman for the gift. She wouldn't hide her passion for jewelry. Huh? The girl means that if she wants to give her something else, it's fine with her. The more jewelry she accumulates by the time of the divorce, the better. That's when Richard came in and asked what was going on. The protagonist had asked him not to get out of bed, so why did he come? It would be rude of him not to meet their guest. Honestly, he just couldn't rub anymore. Ah, then the lad will thank my lord too. Thanks for his help. Wow, what's in it for him? It's every man's duty to protect his spouse. What's he got to do with it? Oh, why would he do that? The Count agreed with the Duke, but it was thanks to him that he was spared a sad fate. I wish he'd stayed in bed. What childishness is this? Oh, the young man wasn't feeling well. What's wrong with him? The lady told him to stay in the chambers. Miss asked Anselm to forgive her, but she had to leave him. Her husband was not well. She hoped for understanding if the lady could not see him off. All right. Out alone, then. The Count asked the lady to stand. Huh? He handed her an envelope. This is an invitation to a reception at their estate. Let them come. Oh, the gentleman was too kind. He even invited her to a reception. She accepted. Oh, he'll be very happy to see my lady there. Has Richard taken his potion yet? Let him drink it. The mister said he'll soon be well enough without it. Well, let him be a good husband, please. The girl wanted to go to the Ardennes appointment? She must, the duke insists. The Earl of Arden's estates are located on the shores of the Eastern Sea and he is developing trade relations on the eastern continent. He always has an abundance of goods that are hard to come by. We need to establish good neighborly relations with them. Such a calculated relationship is not for the lady, but why miss an opportunity like this? She should have a circle of good friends by the time she gets divorced. The gentleman finished his drink and told the lady not to even think about being friends with him. Why? Why is Richard so prejudiced? What? Let him say, has Anselm done anything wrong to him? Or does he blame him for being bullied by the crown prince? What's that stump got to do with it? My lady said she was on his side. On his side, yes. Oh, let her forget and go to sleep. After that, the protagonist covered his head with a blanket. Good night, then. If a mistress says she is on her spouse's side, then she should only care for her spouse. The girl thought that her hubby would not want to go, but he not only went with her, but also dressed so beautifully. He felt insecure, so he tried his best. It's kind of cute. Mr. stood under the carriage with his arm outstretched. What's the matter? The guy asked Elise for a hand. Ah, he's so thoughtful, it's unusual, though it makes Mademoiselle blush. But what a gentleman he is. In the meantime, they've already entered the main hall. The couple were introduced. Wow, that's a lot of guests. The organizer was there to welcome them all. What an honor to have them as guests. Happy birthday to the courtier. Could this young lady be her nephew's wife? What a perfect couple they are just beautiful. Indeed, it was the first time anyone had ever seen such a charming couple. Duke Albert, I think? Very pleased. The people here are much more friendly than the royal retinue. It was an honor to meet the lady. Why do the people there treat them better? Yeah, they're doing it because they're honoring Richard. It's just as Duke Albert intended. The birthday boy has asked to be allowed to thank them all, ladies and gentlemen. Let them begin the formal part of the celebration. He prepared it especially for them. Let them enjoy it. So this is what a real celebration is all about. At that moment, a maid came to the lady and said that she would show her to the young guests. The tea party for the children is separate. Mademoiselle tried very hard to get used to it. She too thought that children and their games had no place at an adult party and that it was wise to separate them. Yeah, uh, the prem is so-so. Crown Prince Christian dominates them even when he's not around. They've learned to laugh heartily and speak their minds. They're not authority figures 
and they don't want to talk to them, Anselm greeted the protagonist. Oh, and he was very happy to see the Sudar. Miss asked if the Count was all business today. No, it's no big deal. He just has to welcome all the guests. Ah, he's asked for everyone's favors. That's all right. Let him handle the guests. They'll go. Wow, let Richard see how many beautiful cakes there are. There's the lady at it again. Sweet tooth. Eating sweets is bad for... He didn't get to finish before his wife shoved a cookie into his mouth. Ho, ho. How talkative her gentleman is today. So, did he like the beer? There's an upside to everything. Oh. The girl rubbed her heel. Oh, I shouldn't have worn my new sandals. Anna and the other maids had worked very hard on her evening look. But Miss had been in such a hurry that she had put on her new sandals and they were too small. The woman wanted to sit on the balcony and rest. The young man asked where she was going. Ah, uh, hadn't Richard been taught that asking such questions to a lady was unseemly? She'll be right back. Ah, that's much better. Who's that talking in the hallway? Rose was asked why the crown prince didn't come. He asked his father, and he says he's already recovered. Was Christian not well? The girl doesn't remember anything wrong with him. He's a disgraceful pretender. Or maybe it's this sorcerer. It's quite possible he gets furious as soon as he hears Richard's name. What? Someone heard that his mother was a prostitute. He grew up in a brothel. Another heard he worked as a hitman. His house was a brothel. You can tell. Barbaric and rude. Oh, man. He's only half blue, you know. At which point a lady came out of the balcony. She got everyone's attention. At that moment, some girl pointed at her and told everyone to watch. The dog's wife, herself. How does she feel about being married to a man like that, huh? Beautiful. What? The girl asked. The protagonist answered. She was perfectly happy with her life with Richard. It was better than being a rotten-toothed gossip. What did she say? Miss knew at once, when she saw the mistress on the hunt, that she liked to be impertinent. The haughty, platinum-haired Rose Felicia, wife of Christian. The girl said that Rose is actually the crown prince's fiancé, so it's better for her friend to watch her foul language. Oh yeah? If the girl wasn't mistaken, there's only one duchess among them, and she already carries her spouse's surname. Unlike Felicia Rose, which one of them should watch her tongue is a big question. Oh my gods. The girl was exactly like her demon husband. Oh man. Not only are they not pretty, but they like to gossip. And the young man wondered why the lady didn't come back. But it turns out she was attacked by those insects. The protagonist confronted them alone. The guy said that they would already go and told his spouse not to pay attention to them. Their words were worthless. No. Water sharpens the stone, and the stone becomes sharper, just as words sharpen the human heart. Domino won't let them say such things and will always side with Richard. And she just hates them, but let the mister be on her side. What they said about my lord hurt his wife too. So that's what it's like when someone is supportive. She's trembling, but she's willing to fight for her spouse. She's for him, and only him. The master said to climb on his back, for the lady's leg was sore. She noticed it in her gait, and he was attentive. Let the miss hug the neck tighter, he didn't want the mistress to fall. He takes care of the girl like a big brother. It's nice to be carried in his arms. It's actually so warm. After the reception, life finally got going. The lady decided that she would read books in the library and then go down to the garden with Anna to admire the flowers. At that moment, the lady heard some sounds from the street. My goodness, it was the night's training. But why are there so many half-naked men out there? Hee <laughs> hee, probably because it's very hot today. At that moment, a mister came up and asked where his wife was looking. Oh, what was she frightened of? Oh, my lady was just watching the fencing. It's so beautiful. She'd like to learn fencing too, wouldn't she? Ah, uh, no. The girl is just hypothetical. The main character didn't finish listening and said he would teach her. He's good with a sword. Oh, he was a warrior too. Miss thought he was only good at magic. What made her think mages weren't good with weapons? Ah, uh, um, she should go. The man's name was Sir Thompson. He had been serving the House of Roblin for a year. He had been knighted for his military valor. He had no need for anything. He was satisfied with his pay in life in general. Except, well, why did the Lord want to fight him? Sometimes his service is difficult. Did he do something to offend him? Did he catch him tonight just to challenge him to a duel? Why would he do that? Well, are they going to start a duel with my Lord? No, we must wait. He caught his wife's gaze from the window and said that now was as good a time as any to begin. All right, then, let's begin. The young man said that if he knocked the sword out of Sir's hands, it meant he had lost. He must be careful not to hurt the young master's pride. 
He must be careful. He must act with restraint. If the man wins, the duke will simply demote him. After all, the young duke is no match for him in swordsmanship. Wow, he's so nimble. The mister can barely keep up with his blows. The main character said that if it was a real duel, he would have blown his head off. If he played give and take with him, he could try again and show him his full strength. What did his lordship say? It was a perfectly fair fight. Now, could he tell you why he challenged Sir Thompson to a duel? Just wanted to test the skills of their knight regiment. Mademoiselle has obtained a map and can see what lands surround them. She can dream of the place she'll live in after the divorce. Only she can't help thinking about the crown prince's illness. If everything goes according to the plot, he must not die. In the future, he will have a son, Leon, whom he will hate and who will inherit the throne. While Leon lived a life of poverty in the slums, Christian lived a life of contentment and prosperity. A vile man, fool. His stomach only hurts because the Rublin family is gaining strength. That's when Richard came in after his bath. The gentleman offered to towel dry his hair. No need. Um, what did she do today? Huh? Reading in the library and looking at a map. Ah, yes. She also watched her husband practicing. Really? Yes. What about his wound? Huh? Is it healed? Does it hurt to move? The lady decided she had to see if it opened up. No need. The young man is already healthy, but he shouldn't exert himself anyway. Oh, right. Well, are they going to bed? No. Let the lady look at her map. What about the idea of looking at it together? That's the Ruble property? Yes. There's a big wasteland over there. The land to the northwest is uninhabitable and is home to many monsters. Is it really that bad? That's where the Akaro Empire is. I see. The lady asked for more details. It's the most favorable place to live. It is a flat area of fertile land with a large river and access to the sea. Why is Miss asking? She was just looking for a country to go to after she leaves this estate in the future. They made a promise to each other. She would have to leave for good after the divorce. They did promise. The only question is, why did the master agree to it? And where did she want to live? Sornetti. Good climate. Not too cold, not too hot. It's suspiciously close to the Earl of Arden's domain. Well, well, well. Spring blossoms were in full bloom, and it seemed like there would be no end to the weather days. However, as summer passed, the brief period of peace came to an end. What? The oath? Dog. He wants to exterminate the Rublin clan? The emperor has issued a new law based on the clan oath. The empire is at war with the kingdom of Peran in the west. According to the oath taken by the great families and the imperial family, the prince is obliged to be at the front and raise the spirit of the soldiers. But Christian was ill and could not get out of bed. So the emperor took an oath that Richard, the heir of the Rublin family, would go to war in place of the crown prince. What? To war? According to the story, the main character shouldn't die in the war. But on the other hand, he was just recently almost killed on a hunting trip. He has no one but his wife. He doesn't have to be on his own. No. Richard is very strong. I... Elise? Is she here too? However, what? Why was she crying? She was begging him mentally not to die and praying that he would come back in one piece. He will. Mistress hugged him so tightly that she fell over him. She's such a fool. Miss didn't want her husband to go to the front. The boy asked her not to cry. The two of them must conceive an heir that very night. The protagonist will not do it. It is his direct duty, and Mr. will do his duty. If so, the young duke would relinquish his title. If so, then the duke also renounced his title. Then he is guilty of death. The emperor is only interested in the extinction of their kind. Everything in this country is in his filthy hands. Albert's hands were up to his elbows in blood, because he was doing everything he could to keep the Rublin family alive. He would not allow their family to end in such disgrace. He said that he was protecting the Rublin family, and he didn't even feel sorry for his own son. But his grandson was not even going to die. Even if the young man goes to the front, he will return from there alive, no matter what it takes. He, too, will not let the Rublin house fall. His clan, Mr. will destroy with his own hands in the future. This time, the lady interrupted her spouse and said she would do his lordship's bidding. Elise? Good thing she has more sense than that fool. The lady asked permission to leave. I guess the main character must be tired today. Good night. They have to get up early tomorrow, so let him sleep. He wanted to say something, but Miss closed the guy's mouth. What a troubled spouse he was, after all. He didn't have to worry. Mademoiselle had a plan. 
she has already asked to check their bed for the morning. As a reward, they would receive jewelry. So he didn't have to worry. Madame took him by the hand and told him that someday there would be someone he would love with all his heart. That's who he would spend his first night with. You don't have to obey anyone. You should only listen to your heart. What? Because intimacy was only possible with someone one loved. Kissing. Intimacy. These things only bring happiness when you love a person. Hasn't the master thought of that? No. Okay, it's time to go to bed now. Love. The word is foreign to the young man. His mother died long ago, and his grandmother sold him for a pittance. His father abandoned him, and his grandfather tried to kill him more than once. A guy's life has always been like a wilderness. Until one day, she showed up. She can heal Mr. Soul. She will always be at his side. She cries when he feels bad and is ready to fight for her husband. Is it love? Master doesn't know what it is. But one thing was clear to him. He doesn't want to lose this girl. Richard's departure for the front was scheduled a month after the emperor's order. According to the rules, he should have had more time to prepare for war, but his majesty ordered haste, for the Peron kingdom was advancing determinedly. So now the young man must spend every day in a forest full of monsters and practice his skills. The emperor is a despot. How sad. He leaves early in the morning and doesn't come back until midnight. He's finally back. Oh, mister is back early today. Let him take off his shirt. What for? Why? The gentleman comes back scratched sometimes. We should have a look at him, or the lady won't sleep just from excitement. But it's nothing. What? The guy was injured, actually. It wasn't nothing to his wife. Don't let him lie to her. Oh my gods, that's a lot of scratches. Let him turn around. Eliza, what? Just let Mr. sit there like that and don't move. He ought to have his whole back rubbed. Oh, she had a lot of nerve ripping his shirt off. Will Richard be able to get back tomorrow before lunch? Why, what is it? His lordship needed to stop. If he keeps going on like this, he's just going to hurt himself. It's all right. We'll just have to wait. Exercise is a good thing. But why does he have to exhaust himself? Why exert himself so much? He wants to survive at the front. That's what anyone would do. Sure, but there is something much more important than training. Most knights spend time with their families before going to the front because they might not see them again. Even if he returns, no one can say how long the war will last. Did he, for instance, have a significant other? Then the boy remembered Elise, who had asked to be back before lunch. It was just that she hadn't been to all parts of the manor yet. She wanted to see the North Wing, but she was afraid to go alone. The mentor strongly advised me not to overwork myself in training and to go home to my family. All right, they're done for the day. He will go first, and tomorrow the night is also free. Hurrah! That's all Sir Thompson wanted. So sick of training with the Duke. He took his advice. Because of his preparations to go to the front, Mr. forgot something important. How could he forget the request of the protagonist? The young man ran to the chambers and saw Mademoiselle sleeping on the sofa. Then she woke up and saw Richard. Oh, right, his birthday. It's not midnight yet, is it? It's not his birthday. What? But Grayson said. In fact, the main character doesn't even know his birthday. And what Grayson said was just something they made up. In the meantime, the gentleman suggested that they go to bed, and tomorrow they would figure out what date to set his birthday on. He wanted the girl to help him come up with one? Okay. If the lady wanted it, she could have made it for tomorrow. Oh, no. A birthday's a big date, so we'll have to think about it. And the North Wing, Mr. will show her tomorrow. Didn't the young man have practice tomorrow? She could relax. No tomorrow. Okay, the important thing is that he doesn't forget. Time passed quickly. It was the last night that Richard would spend at home before going to the front. He entered the room, and the lady immediately threw herself at his neck. What happened? How's he doing? Who? The amulet? Amulet? Ah, they say it can protect its owner from bad luck. Please don't let the mister take it off. I will. Okay, now it's time for bed. Miss has to see him off at four o'clock tomorrow morning, so we need to get to bed early. There were some other things to buy. The gentleman asked him very strongly not to fuss too much. Her husband is leaving for the front, so naturally the protagonist will see him off. Make Mr. Promise he'll wake her up. Okay, the kid promises. All right, good night. May his wife be well, and does not hide her pain when she is alone. Farewell, Elisa. The girl opened her eyes. What time is it? Richard? He left without saying goodbye? That's too much. Mademoiselle asked him to wake her, and he had to do it. The boy promised. How could he just leave without saying goodbye? 
Milady didn't even escort her husband to war. Now she's a heartless wife. Of course, they still have a divorce to go through. But he doesn't even listen to his wife. What does he think he's doing? Madame wasn't some simpleton. When he comes back from the front, she's going to kick him so hard. Mistress was sad that he was gone and wouldn't let her say goodbye to him. Miss wouldn't let him go. May the gods protect him on his journey. Paperwork is a nightmare. Milady hoped the Duke would let her study one more subject. His treatment of her is getting cooler and cooler. And the servants don't even try to do her bidding anymore. I guess it's because the master left. They all forgot about her and pretended she was gone. After all, Mistress was a stranger in this house. But Anne always said my lady was the best. That's a girl's lot. She's lucky to have such a husband. All right, all right. It's better to be absorbed in study than in despondency. Put it in your pocket. No. If they get caught stealing, they'll just be thrown out on the street. It's not the first time Mrs. has stolen and no one's ever caught her. Let her think about it. How can a 15-year-old boy come back from the front? And no? The emperor decided from the beginning that he would send the little duke to war. When the Rublin family is broken, this family is finished. They won't be maids after that anyway. They need to take care of their future. Hmm, interesting. Why didn't they tell Madame of their deep knowledge? Ah, the young duchess. The woman apologized to her ladyship. Well, that's the end of them now. And the missus wondered where things went. The second maid said it was just a small thing for the duchess. And if the young duke died and the family fell into disrepair, how dare that wretch say to Madame's face that her husband will be killed and their family will disappear. She's a criminal. She's saying things that should never be said. Mistress has ordered her to be removed from the grounds. Also, every servant should be reminded of what will happen to them if they behave like this criminal. It's only been a month since Richard's been at the front, and already the servants are gossiping about his defeat. The lady doesn't like it. The lady wants to know how he's doing. No, he's so strong. Of course he'll win. At that moment, Anna came running in and announced that the Duke had won his first battle. What? Mademoiselle knew he could do it. Now the Emperor will reward him for his deed? Yes, without a doubt. May his stomach ache again. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Madame asked the maid, When is the Emperor's birthday reception? In three days' time, and why did her ladyship ask? An idea popped into the girl's head. Wow, what was it? She was going to take away the scoundrels and Chandler's reason to rejoice. Duke Albert and Duchess Elise Rublin. Welcome, there she is. Just a week after Richard's departure to the front, the crown prince, who had been so ill rapidly recovered, as if he'd only been waiting for this, and he's awake as a cucumber at today's reception. While the lady's husband was on the front lines, this turkey was in bed eating cookies. I wish he had them by the throat. But that's all right. Miss will take all his cookies away tonight. Some lady said the duke was young, but he was a rublin after all. The man saw what he did at the king's hunt and had no doubt that the lad would bring victory to their army. The young man was very brave for his age. His majesty saw potential in him, and he was not mistaken. Isn't that what his highness thought? He, he. Yes, of course he did. Oh, for crying out loud. How dare they mix them together. If it wasn't for his father, he'd have gone to the front himself. If the boy had been there, he'd have led the army to victory long ago. Fascinating, ma'am. Ha 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 ha, yes. My lady didn't believe it at first either. Oh, who's that over there? The Duchess of Rublin. And his highness be well. Miss heard he wasn't feeling well. How is he feeling? Wow. Is it just mister? Or is that girl prettier than he thought? Oh, the crown prince was almost well by now. Oh, mademoiselle asked him not to bother. It's his august father's birthday, after all. He couldn't help but attend. His highness is truly gracious. Mademoiselle didn't even know why there were such rumors about him. What rumors? Rumors that he pretended to be ill because he was afraid to go to the front. Madame could not understand how anyone could say such a thing about him, a young man so full of filial virtue. Who the hell said such a thing to her? Oh, the lady must have misheard. Really? Well, next time, let her tell those who dare spread such gossip that Crown Prince Christian will soon lead reinforcements to the front. Oh, how brave His Highness is. At this moment, the people present began to ask, Was it true? Of course it was. Oh, what a fool! When the guy realizes what he's done, he won't be able to joke about it. The protagonist will just watch. Albert wished His Majesty a happy birthday from the entire House of Rublin. May he accept a gift from their family. They wished a ruler like this diamond to shine the rays of his favor on their empire. Why would the Duke say such a thing? He is too kind. His son has already brought him a great victory. 
what more is there to look forward to? Eliza bowed and said that His Majesty had honored her husband greatly. It was a small gift in comparison. Besides, if His Highness has delighted them with the news, that he will personally lead reinforcements to the front. Oh, the Crown Prince is so brave. Everyone in the hall was saying that His Imperial Highness is a hero.